Over the last few months, the OKLCH color model has become my default choice. It's also making the rounds again on the internet. And the reason is, is because this has been supported now for two or even three years in most modern browsers. Now, it gives you a huge range of color options that are far beyond what RGB or hex can give you. But on top of that, there are a bunch of other benefits. So I want to talk about four benefits of using OKLCH. We'll talk about support as well and how to provide a fallback if you need to. And we'll talk through all the benefits showing you a side-by-side -side comparison. You ready? Let's go. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Okay, so what is OKLCH? Well, like I mentioned, it's a color model that opens up a bunch of benefits. We're going to talk about those four benefits in a second. But first of all, let me just point you to some articles that I'll include in the repo here. This one right here made the rounds recently on Hacker News, and it's kind of a reintroduction for a lot of people. And over here, this one is kind of the OG. It's been around for a lot longer, and also it is just crazy in depth. So anything you want to know about color and more will be found in this article here. Now let's talk through just kind of the basics of this by first of all looking at the extremely short version. You can see that it's OKLCH and the L is for lightness. Importantly, this is perceived lightness, and we'll talk about what that means in a second. Then we've got C, which is essentially the saturation, and then H, which is the hue. So if you're used to HSL like I am, this is basically backwards. HSL instead of HSL, right? How it typically is in that order. So the C essentially stands for saturation. And this is between 0 and 1. So is this one. It's also between 0 and 1. And then you've got 0 and 360 for the hue, like the hue in HSL. You also have an alpha channel as well, where you can set this between 0 and 1 or 0 and 100%, whatever you want to do there. And you can see here that this would make this more opaque. Now, just like with HSL, that means it's very easy to change the color. You just basically move the hue. However, in a different way, it actually provides way more consistency and accessibility because of this whole perceived thing. So let's actually jump into this, and then we'll talk through a couple other details as we go. So let's start here, first of all, with the first one I'm going to mention. The first advantage here is this alpha advantage. Now, is this a real advantage of OKLCH only? No, but it is the way I like to write CSS. And you'll see here I've got in both the HSL and the OKLCH, nothing wrapping it. So I don't have the actual HSL function wrapping it. It's just the raw numbers. Now, the reason I do that is because I can just come over here and very quickly just change this dynamically and have this kind of alpha channel be on its own. So I pass the variable in here and just wrap this wherever I happen to use it. And I just have a keyboard shortcut that does that. And it makes it really easy to set these. Now, of course, you want a design system that's predictable. So... You can do this however you want to. Usually I would define this by some variable, but to me, this is a really nice uh, feature of this kind of dynamic alpha channel. So that's the first thing, but again, it is available in HSL as well. The second thing is really where you start to see all this stuff shine, because now we're going to talk about the additional wider color you get. That's the second advantage. So over here, you can see I've got this HSL, OKLCH, OK, and this wider color display shows more, can show more vibrant colors. Now, you're not seeing it here because ultimately I want to compare these two for the next thing I want to talk about, which is predictability. So if I come over here, you'll see that we've got actually different things that different displays can show. Right inside this inner triangle is what sRGB displays, which is most older displays can show. But most modern displays, anything on a smartphone for the most part, on a modern smartphone, or on most monitors that are modern, or certainly like a MacBook Pro or anything like that, they've got a way larger kind of color gamut that they can show off. Now, this is probably actually best shown if I look at a tool. So down this way, I've also got some visualizers or converters. So let's look at this one right here. And I'll actually make this full screen. And if I jump into this 3D model here, you'll see that I've got like way higher peaks in some of these than I would in like an sRGB model. And you can actually see this very visually right here. So there's a line right here is going to show where we transitioned from an RGB all the way to an, a, a, a P3 color display. And you can see the comparison. I've got way more color space right here. Now, a lot of this depends on the color you choose. So you can see some of these are closer, but some of those peaks are quite a bit taller. So if I come over here to like the pinks and the oranges, those aren't that big of a difference. But if I get into like the green territory, suddenly I've got way more room to, to work with here. So as I move this up, you'll notice this fallback over here is not nearly as intense as this P3 display. Obviously, your display has to be able to show this, um, but assuming that that is the case, you'll see just the difference between these two things. So it gives a vibrancy to colors that cannot be there, like physically cannot be there with HSL or hex or anything like that. So you've got 
a wider range of things that you can actually show off here. And you can see as I drag this around, you've got that variance as well. So this tool in particular is a really helpful uh, visualizer. It also lets you convert it, but I'll show you a different tool that I think does a better job of that. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense, that second advantage, which is this new color space. Now I went ahead and got this ready, even though we weren't quite ready to use it, because I wanna show one more thing. The third advantage here is the predictability of these different color spaces. If I jump back over to my CSS and I scroll back up top here, you'll notice that these are the exact same and these are the exact same. In other words, the saturation and the lightness are identical, not necessarily to each other, but within their own kind of group. However, notice that I've got the hue only changing. But because I keep the, the lightness the same, so in this case, it'd be the 50%. Over here, it happens to be the 70%. You'll notice that because I'm keeping that the same, it should be predictable the whole way through. Now, when I come to HSL, it's not predictable. In fact, I can hardly read the text here. Perceived lightness, though, is the same all the way through this OKLCH. OK and that's one of the places in which this really shines. You have really perceived by the eye lightness that stays consistent throughout the color. So wherever you're moving within your color space, you can actually dynamically create these colors and know that it will always be visible. If you can read text on a green background, you know if you change the hue to something else, you'll also be able to read it there. That's not the case for HSL. So for instance, if I come over here and I grab all these, let's change these to something like, I don't know, 20. Now for most of these, you know, I can barely read that, but not really. Maybe here just a bit. When I get to the blue, I can hardly read anything. Now that's not going to be the case when it comes um, to the OKLCH. I can change this lightness value right here to whatever I want it to be. And if I can read it in one, I'll always be able to read it in all of them. So none of them there not really any of them there, starting to get higher. And as I move throughout, as soon as I can see it in one, I know I'll be able to see it in all of them. So it gives you way more predictability around brightness. Now that's also the same when it comes to shade. When you look at the two next to each other, and again, I'm gonna pull up one of these examples over here because it shows this off really well. Right here, you see that the color actually kind of drifts a little bit. It, it becomes less blue as it gets darker here with HSL. Whereas with OKLCH, it's just as vibrantly blue, it's just darker. And that's all you have to worry about is just that lightness changing, not the actual color. So it doesn't get more muddy the darker it gets. It stays blue, it just gets darker. Now, the fourth benefit I've seen really is in the gradients. So let's actually look at those now. I'm gonna get rid of this right here and we'll come with this back out. And notice I actually have RGB, I have OKLCH and OKLab. If I jump over this way, you'll see that I've just got these things mapped here. So like NSRGB, NOKLCH, and NOKLab. OKLab is another color model that we'll talk about in just a second here. But notice that I'm going from the same color, right? I'm going from this yellow to this kind of purple color. And in RGB and even OKLab, it's kind of going from one, getting kind of muddy, and going to the other. However, what is going on with OKLCH? I go from this color, I never put green in here or blue in here, and suddenly I've got all these colors showing up. Now this is the way that the color, the color model works. Rather than going in a direct line, it actually takes kind of more of a circular route. And this is the way it essentially mimics the way the human eye perceives color. So I can change these colors up top here. The variables are used down below. So let's, I don't know, let's come to like a green color and maybe here uh, we'll come to, if I can get this to select, there we go, we'll come to like a pink color. Now, if I save here, you'll notice, whoa, all of a sudden these huge vibrant colors, I go from green to pink, from green to pink, and here we go from green to yellow to orange. What, what's going on here? Well, if I open this back up, you'll see we're actually going through all those color spaces. So I'm going backwards through all this, and you'll see that I'm going all the way down to over here. So I get all those colors, it's kind of wrapping those colors. Whereas this is just going from one color to the other color, not working its way through that, the actual color hues. Again, what is happening here? Well, let's come back over here. I'll use this one as an example as well. They we talked through this, but here's really the, the visual that helped me. OK, LCH is going to go around like this to get to that color, which means it's going to go through any other color that exists, whereas OK Lab and sRGB are going to go straight across. Now, he recommends here using OK Lab for gradients in case that's a problem in your particular gradient because it uses that straight line and gives more consistent results. However, if you want that kind of like vibrancy to your gradients, I think OK LCH gives you some really cool kind of additions. I want to talk about one other tool and then look at support. So if I jump over here to the other tool I want to talk through is this one right here. You'll notice that not only does this give you the same kind of option to play with it and look at it and see what stuff does, 
but you can also actually drop in and like bulk convert things, which I found really helpful. So for instance, let's get this back over this way. Let's say I had all these variables right here and I just wanted to drop them in and let's make sure that this actually works like that. And then let's convert these things. You'll notice it can just convert a bunch of these all at once. So now I could just take these and I could drop them in right here. And now I've got them in OKLCH. So I found this tool really helpful, especially for that kind of conversion. There's also other things you can do in here as well. So you can like take one hex, hex value and just convert it over. Gives you a little bit more detail about kind of how these things work. And then again, you've got like hex different controls if you want to just drag this out and actually get like a whole like CSS variable spread. And you can just copy these and then use them wherever you want. So again, I could come over here and paste this in. So maybe you want to just set out your color scheme and pick a hue and then let it let it rip. And you can do that here in this tool. Okay, lastly, let's talk a little bit about support. If you jump over this way, I mentioned in the intro here that we've got March 2023 for Chrome, March 2022 for Safari. Now, Apple is the first to do this, I think, just because of their displays and they wanted things to be vibrant on their phones. So classic Apple, but helpful for us because now it's supported by 92.35% of all browsers. Now, a couple things to note here. Just because it can display this doesn't mean the person's screen can actually show it. So it'll do its best, but it's only going to be able to reach the heights of the sRGB. Your colors are just fine. You can leave them as they are, and the display will take care of showing the most vibrant it can. Now, you can obviously provide support as well. And again, I'm going to jump back over to this one. If you want to, just provide support like this. So however you happen to be setting out your base, this is using uh, like Tailwind, I'm guessing here, but you can just have your fallbacks and then in a support query here, say if the color can take OKLCH, OK then use this instead. So that would be a safe way to do this. And again, that conversion tool is a really helpful way to quickly take whatever you've got here and just drop it in down here as well. I hope that was a helpful overview. I'll encourage you to read those articles if you want to know more about it and make sure you always provide fallback support until, you know, you reach a percentage that you're happy with on Can I Use. Well, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.